Welcome to Seven Pot Club. I'm Rob. I grow hot peppers. You might have thought I was going to let July pass by without a new video. But never fear, I am here with a quick hot pepper growing update. In this episode, I'll show you how the garden is looking at the end of July and highlight a few interesting plants with ripening pods. I'll let you know how my clover as companion planting experiment is coming along. And I'll show you a preview of I Grow Hot Peppers, the song that for some reason has taken me almost six years to complete and release. Here's the current state of our front yard hot pepper garden. Like nearly everyone in the Northern Hemisphere, we've had some weather-related challenges this summer. For us, the main problem has been high temps combined with a lack of rain, keeping us in near drought conditions. In addition, we've been dealing with poor air quality and hazy skies due to wildfires in Canada. But today, it's sunny with a pleasant temp around 80 degrees Fahrenheit, and the air quality, while only rated fair, is not a serious health hazard. I've done my best to keep the garden growing and looking lush in these dry conditions. It helps that we've had a couple of decent rain showers over the past several days. Most pods won't be ready to harvest for at least a few weeks, but a few are already starting to ripen. I'm still about a month away from filming my annual Walking the Pepper Path episode, so while we're waiting for a full-on harvest season, let's take a look at a few plants with early ripening pods. Here's Monster Gum Leopard with its dramatically dark calyx. Very tasty as well. Hot, but not quite super hot. I just love Candy Coat DD. I've got a couple of these in pots. They look very similar. Now I can't say the same about my Tangerine Tiger F4 plants. This one has normal, non-variegated foliage. Some, but not all of the pods have subtle striping. Now, look at this other plant. It's grown from the same batch of seeds, but most of the leaves are extremely variegated. Yet, there are a couple of branches with normal, solid green leaves. The pods on both plants look very similar. I got these seeds from Gapy of Gapy's Grub. In addition to peppers, she also grows many other edible plants. Plus, she uses what she grows to make delicious things to eat. If you haven't checked out her entertaining and informative channel, you should definitely do so right away. Here's Pimenta Diamar from Brazil with its uniquely shaped pods. Ahi Strawberry, medium hot and very fruity. Seven Pot Orange Yellow in varying stages of ripeness. The standard phenotype for this variety is more of a maruga shape, but this one has a tail. Okay, here's a mystery. This pot has either lost its label or never had one, and I have no idea what variety it is. I don't remember planting anything that looks like this. Any ideas, viewers? If you saw my June update, you know that I'm growing Ladino clover as a companion plant in my two ground beds. In early days, I had some issues. Squirrels and rabbits were running around in the beds and they destroyed a few plants. Plus, the clover was growing higher than the young plants and I had to keep trimming it back. But all in all, it's worked out okay. Spreading blood meal around the perimeter seems to have discouraged the animal incursions, and the pepper plants have finally grown tall enough to escape the shade of the clover. I love the way it looks, and it certainly reduced the need for weeding. When I turn the clover over at the end of the season, it will help fix nitrogen in the soil. But if I do this experiment again next year, I might look for another clover variety that doesn't grow quite as tall. And while I'm down here rolling in clover, might as well take a look at the beautiful colors of this Rhino DD Red. The lack of rain may be tough on the garden, but it's been perfect weather for road construction. The first complete rebuild of our street in 60 years is now nearing completion. It's been a very noisy summer, and sometimes our block has not been accessible to cars, but the end result will be a big improvement. Now about that new song. If you're a songwriter, you know it's magic when a song pops into your head fully formed. But sometimes, a promising song is difficult to finish, and you have to put it aside and let it age for months or even years. If it's a good song, it will pop back into your head when it's ready to be completed. Such was the case with I Grow Hot Peppers. 
you're hearing a tiny snippet of this song in the beginning of every Seven Pot Club video. And if you watch all the way to the end of my videos, you'll hear the backing track for another part of the song. So, to hopefully get you excited for the release of my upcoming single, here's a short preview of the song and music video. We shot the Twin Peaks inspired footage a few years back in an art installation our friend Nancy Waller built in her studio. I saw it in a dream and I woke up nothing. Saw it in a dream written on a napkin. Saw it in a dream that I made it happen. Saw it in a dream. A crazy funny dream. Like that was the part of the song I call the bridge. I hope you're anxious to hear more. I Grow Hot Peppers will be available on all the major streaming services, and I'm working with another friend to complete the editing and effects for the rest of the music video. Coming soon, really. In the meantime, follow our daily exploits on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook. And as always, keep cultivating your passion for plants. For 7 Pot Club, I'm Rob.